All right. In this lesson, we will start with having a clean Laravel instance. We will just download it from Composer and we will set up our web server. So I'll launch it from Composer, create project. Let's call it Laravel Docker. And I'll just wait for the installation to complete and then we will move ahead okay so I have Laravel installed um, pretty much everything was downloaded from loaded from cache because I you know, had installed it a few uh, days back so yeah Composer had almost everything inside cache so let us go inside our folder which is CD Laravel Docker I'll open up the folder in Visual Studio Code <clears throat> and now I typically do serve and you know, the application will be visible on port 8000 right but I don't want this to happen because this is now using the PHP on my machine and you know I only have my SQL on my uh, laptop but rather I would want Postgres so let's get started in here I'll create a new file called docker-compose.yml okay now the first thing which you need to tell docker in this file is the version there are certain you know, new features which are available uh, as you bump up the version on uh, the, the YML file but I typically get whatever is required in version 3 so I'll stick to that so after defining the version we need to tell docker what services we want so we'll have a services block in which I'll say my first service is going to be web and then I'll have a container name okay um, let me first add that app name and then web okay so what I'm doing is I'm saying to docker that you know I need these services out of which web is the first one and the name of the container should be app underscore name underscore web so what docker is able to do is it can read this env file because wherever my compose file is it can look for in dot env and all those variable I can use it so uh, I can do docker underscore laravel okay and so what will happen is I'll have this being replaced with the docker underscore laravel uh, value now after the container name the next thing which I'm going to do is say that I need to build this service with a context which is say slash docker web okay so I can define what the container is going to be I can say whether this is an image or whether it is a custom uh, in a container which I'll define in this folder right so why don't we create that folder first so I'll have a folder called docker and inside that I'll have web right and in this I need to create a docker file okay now what this docker file will do is define what image I need to use for you know the web server and what different components I want to install in the web server now I'm not going to type it out in the entire um, you know, file so I'll just copy paste it and then we will go line by line okay so this is what I have okay um, I need to save this file so I have built context I'll go through this file but first let's complete this so you know, I have defined what is the build context and then I need to define which ports you know, I need to map 
from my machine to the container so ports and this is going to be I'll say 9000 from my machine should point to port 80 of uh, this container and volumes volumes uh, in docker is basically an area where you can store data right and what we want to do is we want to tell docker that in this web server i want you to use this folder and map it to where ww app inside the container okay so whatever is here will be visible on this folder okay so if you see the convention is always very simple something on the host and something on the remote right or the container so so i say this folder is mapped to this folder on the container okay so now it will make sense when we do all these installs and we say you know copy the default conf which is here and put it inside etc apache 2 sites enabled and this because in apache what i am saying is my doc root is going to be where ww app slash public so this is where the laravel's index.php file is right and what i am saying docker is you know put every code every file the entire code map it to where the where ww app which means this right so this is that is how we have established that mapping between our machine and the code folder with the docker container right and this is important and this is something which is working directory so let's go step by step in this docker file which we are referencing from this context we are saying that you know the build should done based on the context of this folder okay so docker and then web and the docker file is the default file name which it will look for otherwise i can you know uh, do a custom name and i, I can reference it but i will uh, go with the convention so now i go to the docker file i'll say i need to build a container or rather an image first of all from this okay this is the php image which is available on docker hub this is so if i go to hub.docker.com and if i search for php this is the official uh, you know, image okay all the official images are you know direct names for example docker pull php or docker pull mysql docker pull nginx whereas if uh, there are some custom may uh, custom images for example php slash php unit or php myadmin slash php myadmin they will have that you know slash to them which means they are not the official ones okay so in here we are using what 7.2.10 should be somewhere here 7.2.11 is here uh, okay i think with 7 uh, 7.3 it uh, you know that thing is removed but obviously this is available we can also take the latest one which is the 11th version but that's fine i i will stick with this nothing major has changed so so this is the from which is the image then we um, tell docker that you know run these commands so this is basically app get update and then install these utilities the zip utilities i'm enabling the rewrite module and i'm in you know enabling installing and enabling this pdo uh, uh, library of php so that we can use uh, postgres so yeah this is the list and then i you know remove the app list because it does save about you know 10 15 megs of space on the container okay then obviously you know on the web server we will need composer without composer we can't do anything so i have this command which will install composer on the docker with the web container then i am copying this file the default.conf and putting it in the apache's sites enabled file sorry folder so that you know apache can um, pick it up and what it will do is it will set the doc root to this and i have localhost 
we can define more things on it but yeah right now that's that's all working directory is basically you know whenever i you know ssh into my container i will directly go into this particular folder because that's the only place where i'm interested to look for and uh, that's where i will mostly run my commands right and this is basically you know cmd is the the command which is going to be executed when the container is ready and what we are saying is you know run apache control in foreground so that the container can you know continue to run okay so the thing with docker containers are that you know if you run them and uh, it starts as a process and if the process ends if there is nothing happening then the container will just stop and that is the reason we need to keep it in foreground uh, we are saying that we are exposing port 80 of this container and that is the reason we are able to map 9000 to port 80 okay so with everything in here i guess we should be able to build our uh, docker container now i would like to tell you that you know, whatever i have done in here right is something which i have already executed i have a you know image on my machine so if if i just want to show you docker image list yes i have you know all these uh, images on my machine and out of that this is what i'm referencing right so this 378 mb of um, data i already have and that's the reason when i execute that command it is going to run quite fast um, so docker compose up okay um, but yeah obviously when you do it and if it is first time for you if you don't have those images it might take some time for you know, docker to download the entire image and then get that container up and running so let's hit the command and let's see what's happening so yeah everything is ready so if you see what it did was it followed all the steps so from this then it ran everything in here using cache then it ran composer using cache copy the files using cache everything is basically from cache right so yes this is pretty much you know ready now if i obviously 8000 is not going to work because i have stopped the serve but if i do 9000 i have this running right and just to ensure that you know i'm not supposed to ssh into a server and make changes what i will do is i'll go into the web.php not web.php rather welcome where what happened welcome dot blade right yes in here close the terminal ta -ta -ta -ta. yeah i'll just make some changes hit refresh and we have the change in here so you can see i am you know pretty much happy to make changes inside my machine so you know if you see the path it's basically a folder inside my desktop right but whatever changes i do it is getting mapped inside the container and those changes are being reflected on the you know applications container so yeah this is the first step we have our web server running and um, thanks to the the php image we are able to modify it based on our own needs and yeah have that you know requirements done into an image so in the next video we are going to set up the database container with using postgres thanks for watching guys if you like the videos do click on the thumbs up icon and don't forget to subscribe to my channel